Now, before we start talking about nouns, adjectives, and verbs, what I want to talk about is primitive data. Now, we know what data is, we analyze it all the time. Our minds analyze data so that we can interpret and work with certain objects around us. Well, likewise, we need primitive data in our programs in order for us to actually create a program. Without primitive data, you will be unable to write a single program. Now, let's take a look at some primitive data types. So, the first one is a string. Now, a string is either single or double quotes. Now, whenever you see a single or double quotes in your program, whatever is inside those single or double quotes is a string. It's of a string data type. And strings can contain special characters and they can contain numbers as well. So, that is of the string data type. We also have integers. Integers are whole numbers, meaning there's no decimal place. These are not fractional numbers. For example, 100, 200, 300, 400. These are integers. They are whole numbers. But what happens when you work with currency? Well, currency needs floating point numbers. So this is another primitive data type, float. Floating point numbers allow for decimal places. So for example, one pound 50 or 1.5, there's a decimal place in there. That is of the floating primitive data type. Now, finally, we have Boolean. Boolean is either true or false. So whenever in your program you see true or false, you know that that is of the data type Boolean. And Boolean can only be one or the other. It can only be true or false. It cannot be in both states. So whenever you see the keywords true or false on their own, you know it's a Boolean data type. So these are all our primitive data types. String, integer, float, and Boolean. So please do remember them and also be very, very careful that you don't just make assumptions about the primitive data type. For example, what is this value? Is it a string or is it of the data type Boolean? The answer is it's actually of the string type because again, whenever you see single or double quotes, it is a string data type. And likewise, if that string just consisted of numbers, it doesn't matter. It's a string data type. So please be very, very careful. Whenever you see single or double quotes, you know you know it's a string data type. So there are the primitive data types. And by looking at them, you can see that they are very basic. You can easily identify their basic snippets of data. Primitive. But now let's take a look at languages. Because languages, whether it be English and French or whatever language it is, contain nouns, adjectives, and verbs. But we also have programming languages, again, created for human beings. And how do we make an effective communication system? Well, we make an effective communication system by copying how we communicate with one another with a normal language, and we take that over to a programming language. So your programming languages also contain the word types of nouns, adjectives, and verbs. You have all of these types of words. You also have other types as well, but we just want to concentrate on these three, and that will help us really understand how we are using programming languages to communicate with the computer. So if we take a look at the world around us, we have objects. We always work with objects, and objects are really special because objects are a collection of nouns, adjectives, and verbs. They're a collection of all three. So I want to, for example, take a car. A car, we need nouns. We need nouns to describe that car. So for example, the color, the weight, the size, all those dimensions, and the maker of the car, for example. So we have all of these nouns, but are they enough to describe the car? No. Nouns need adjectives. Adjectives describe the noun. So for example, color is the noun, 
but red is the adjective. Red describes the colour. So that's why we have nouns and adjectives. And red would be of the string data type. And for example, the weight. The weight could be an integer data type. And I can also use nouns to describe the state of the car. For example, parked. Is the car parked or not? Now, we know that it can't be both. It can't be parked and not parked at the same time. So it's either one or the other, true or false. So the best data type is a Boolean data type. True if the car is parked or false if the car is not parked. And you can also see that the nouns themselves are of the primitive data type string, such as color, weight, size, all the rest of it. They are primitive data types. And also we use those primitive data types as adjectives. So we could have a primitive data type of either string, integer, float, or Boolean. And so when you combine these together, what you are doing is you are describing the physical appearance of an object, but also you can describe the state of the object as well. But describing isn't enough to replicate the real world, because in the real world, it's not just describing objects, you can work with those objects, you can do things with those objects. And this is what we mean by verbs. Verbs are doing words, they're words that take action. For example, I can get in the car, that alone is a verb. And what do we have as verbs? We have functions. Functions allow us to perform actions in our programs. It allows us to define some actions and then we can run that function at a later time. So when I step out of my house, I can run the function get in on my car. So when I invoke this function, what happens is I am performing an action and that's what we're doing here. So we have human languages and we have programming languages. Again, programming languages was created by human beings, so we've taken our communication language feature set, if you will, and we've transformed that into a programming language with nouns, adjectives, and verbs. And your nouns and adjectives can describe the physical look of the object, but also it can describe the state of the object as well. And we do that with primitive data, very basic types of data, string, integer, float, and boolean. And finally, we have verbs that allow us to perform an action on that object. And it's important to note that an object itself is a collection of nouns, adjectives, and verbs.